Nancy is at Captain's Cove Amusement Park in New Jersey. Things are not good here. Someone stole a carousel horse, and now the carousel turns on by itself in the middle of the night. Also, the roller coaster stopped mid-ride, hurting some people. The curse is so bad, they had to shut the park down. Now, this could have been a scary game, but it's not. The amusement park is bright and colorful. I really like the fish theme and the cartoon drawings everywhere. Elliot did a great job with the park's artwork. I like it a lot. It's definitely a fun, happy environment, which is one of the reasons why I like the game so much. This was the first Nancy Drew game I ever played. That's another big reason why I love this game so much. It brings back good memories. If I had started playing the series with Secrets Can Kill, I probably wouldn't have liked it, and I wouldn't be playing the games today. The opening letter ends with footage of the carousel moving, which I thought was a nice touch. The game has a lot of nice little things like that. For example, the outside of the Captain's Quarters Hotel. If you look closely, you see it has a shell awning, shells on the pillars, a ship wheel on the door. It's neat! It's a little thing, but it's still neat. Nancy got a major cell phone upgrade in this game. You click on the phone in her inventory, and you get taken to a separate screen, just like her PDA in the previous game. The phone has a directory, so you can easily go through her list of contacts. No more manually dialing 10-digit phone numbers! Hooray! The phone gets a fair amount of use in this game. Paula and Officer Paris will automatically call Nancy several times as part of Harlan's storyline, and you have to call three people in order to solve puzzles... I believe calling the Hardy Boys is optional, as is calling Lance Huffington and Louis G, but those are interesting enough that I generally call them, even though I don't have to. Nancy's hotel room has a room service phone and menu. Her computer has her journal and her list of things to do. She automatically checks things off on her to-do list, which is nice. I kind of wish they kept that feature, because in later games you'll have a list of 40 things you have to do and you have to check them all off individually in order to know which ones haven't been done. There's still no scroll bar on the to-do list in journal, though. That's not good. Nancy's computer has a flag game. It's a generic match 3 game, which will appear again later in the series. Petroglyph Punch! There are nautical flags in this game. I thought that was strange. That would fit better in the next game. It's not like it's a bad flag game, but it's weirdly out of place. It doesn't get mentioned anywhere else, and there's no reason to play it, especially since the game has other, better mini-games that are mandatory. I generally avoid the matching game on Nancy's computer. Nancy also has email, although she can't send email, she can only get it. She gets a series of emails from Hannah about Togo the dog, who's sad because his doggy toy is trapped under the TV cabinet. Poor Togo. I thought it was kind of neat that Nancy got emails from Hannah. It kind of, you know, makes it seem like Nancy's a real person with a real life besides solving mysteries. And it's cool to find out more about Hannah and Togo because we never get to see them ever. Nancy also gets a series of emails from Sassy Detective. The emails explain how Invisible Ink works, how you can distract a culprit with jewelry, and what the various end-of-game awards are. So the emails kind of help with puzzle solving. You don't need to read them, but they're nice to have. And in general, I think it's neat Nancy Drew finally is using email for the first time. Welcome to the 2000s, Nancy. When Nancy enters the park, Harlan asks her to go through the employee's only door and the whale's mouth. Harlan is the generic good-looking guy in a uniform type, which we saw with Ranger Acres in the last game. He's nicer than Ranger Acres, and it's pre he's pretty helpful. He gives Nancy free fun cards so she can play arcade games and go on the rides. Anybody who gives you unlimited fun cards can't be all that bad. Harlan is the only security guard here, because her interactive can't afford to animate more than four characters. He tells Nancy who the other characters are, and he lets her know she has to go meet Joy Trent. He's got a video of the carousel haunting, which, as he notes, is not all that impressive. It's black and white footage with no sound. I was more scared by the horses in the opening letter. The option to see the haunting tape never goes away, and sometimes I accidentally click on that dialogue option multiple times in a row. I feel really stupid for doing that. 
Also in Harlan's area is his locker and the phone number for the police. Nancy doesn't need the police's number, though, because the police auto-call her. Paula auto-calls you when you go to Joy's office. She says all the rides are shut down except the carousel, and she seems like a nice boss. Too bad 90% of her role in this game is yelling at Nancy during the death scenes. You fell off a carousel horse? You're off the case! You messed up some wires because you're not an electrical engineer? You're off the case! Solving robot riddles instead of the mystery? You're off the case, Drew! Aw, oh, come on, Chief! Give me another chance! No, no, you're off the case! Go back home! Joy's office is rather plain, which matches her personality. She's more focused on business than other people. She says outright that the curse is a fake, and Paula only hired Nancy as a diversion. Just like how Paula only hired Joy out of guilt, after forcing Joy's father into bankruptcy and death. Wow, that's a pretty intense thing to dump on someone you just met. No wonder Joy has trouble making friends. Joy gives you an access card, and she tells you about all the other characters, which is the exact same thing Harlan did. I guess it was a little repetitive to have two character introductions in a row, but Joy and Harlan have somewhat different views on the other characters, so it's not as bad as it could have been. In Joy's dresser is a stenography note about a carousel horse being sold. The name of the horse is Smudge, though. Nancy has to call Bess and George for help. George promises to research stenography, while Bess complains about doing other people's chores. Now Bess knows what it's like to be Nancy Drew. Eventually, Bess and George call you back. They send Nancy an email on stenography. The email is neat. I, I liked learning about stenography. I even tried using it in real life for a while, uh, until a couple of days later when I forgot all about it. It's still cool, and I especially like the little quizzes. Uh, anyway... You do stenography to learn that the carousel horse's name is Glory. Also in Joy's office is a newspaper article about stolen jewels that were found in a carousel horse. It's possible the 23-year-old jewel heist has some connection to the current carousel robbery. Me, I'm kind of surprised they didn't check all the carousel horses for stolen jewels. The thief hid half of the jewels inside one horse. It makes sense to look in all the others, right? Just in case you didn't notice the newspaper article, Paula will call Nancy and tell her about it. She puts Nancy in touch with Detective Paris, who promises to investigate. Paris will later call and say the jewel thief died in jail. His recently paroled cellmate fits Harlan Bishop's description perfectly. After all, how many men in New Jersey have New Jersey accents? Like, practically none! Paris isn't finished investigating yet, but he thought it was important to jump to conclusions and interrupt Nancy with an incomplete report just to throw suspicion on Harlan. After meeting Joy, Elliot and Ingrid both appear on the map. Ingrid has a calm voice, and she thinks Nancy is niacin deficient. This is more or less the only time she mentions food to Nancy. It's strange! Ingrid's obsession with food is a running joke with all the other characters, but they mention it more often than Ingrid does. I feel like the weird food taste gets played up way more than it should have been. Ingrid somewhat gives off an otherworldly sense, like Abby from Message in a Haunted Mansion. I don't think it fits well with her down-to-earth engineering expertise. It, those two things don't really mesh together very well, and overall, I'd say I don't like Ingrid as a character. The game tries to do a few things with her, but they don't really work, and she ends up being vaguely strange. Well, maybe Vaguely Strange is what they were going for. If that's the case, then they did a good job with her. Another problem with Ingrid is that she doesn't do much besides make little jokes and force Nancy to do all of her work. Here at the start of the game, she tells you to fix the card reader for the roller coaster. She tells you to fix the broken midway game. She tells you to find her pliers and to get her soldering gun from Elliot Chen. Jeez, Ingrid! Nancy is not your maid! I think the only thing Ingrid does herself is turn on the access card readers, and I bet she didn't have to do anything more complicated than flip a switch to do that. Ingrid's room is more interesting than she is. I like the food poster on the door. That was cool. There are interesting amusement park ride things, like a shark cart and a spinning teacup ride. That's cool. I wish we could check out a spinning teacup ride. That would be a cool location. Uh, by Ingrid's computer is an ad for a car, and there's a bag she won't let Nancy look in. 
Harlan wouldn't let Nancy look in his locker, and Elliot won't let Nancy look at his magazine. Clearly, someone decided each suspect has an item you can't look at unless the suspect is out of the room. So we snoop on all the suspects. It works for me. When you first go to Elliot's, you knock blue paint on the floor. He gets mad and kicks you out until Joy calls him. Elliot is the most interesting looking character. He's got a shirt with a cool skateboarder dude. His hair is wild and he's got paint all over himself. It's kind of good that Elliot ended up being the culprit. I wouldn't have wanted an extreme close-up of any of the other characters, but Elliot's crazy hair? Yeah, I want to see more of that. So when you go to Joy's office to tell her to call Elliot, she's not there. A robot is on her desk and it talks to Nancy. It's Miles, the magnificent memory machine! Uh, and he's on her dresser, not her desk. Sorry about that. Miles is great. I love him. He's easily my favorite part of the game. He's funny, he looks like he's made of random garbage, he gives interesting riddles, and brings back memories of love. What's not to like? Miles tells you to leave a note on Joy's desk. The note has a ghost dog picture on it. Cute. Players are supposed to note that Joy's pencil is chewed up, but I honestly didn't notice it. When you leave the note for Joy, you can meet Elliot. The first impression of him was wrong. He's not mean. He's actually a pretty mellow, funny guy. He thinks the curse is junk, and he has no problems handing over his soldering gun. He openly admits he's terrible at deadlines. He says the stolen carousel horse is a worthless replica made to replace Glory. I have to assume Elliot is lying about this, because otherwise he's an idiot. Why would he steal a worthless horse and make forgeries of it? That makes no sense! But it's also stupid of him to lie about the horse's value to Nancy, because that's a lie which is easily disproven, so I don't get it. I, I, I don't understand that line of dialogue. Elliot's area has a library with a cool seahorse design. You can read the books and learn about carousels. It's optional, but interesting. The measuring stick and lathe are here for a puzzle. Uh, there's tissue strips and tape for a different puzzle. There's also a fan uh, towards the back of Elliot's area. It's got tissue strips attached to it. And if you play with it on junior mode, Nancy has a flashback. She'll remember the fan blowing the tissue strips. This is the clue that you need to use tissue strips and tape on the carousel's band organ. That was actually a really neat clue. I kind of wish we had subtle hints like that uh, in, in other games. I liked it. Elliot also has a receipt for a lot of wood and a box of horse tails that he won't let you open. If you open the box while he's gone, Nancy leaves it open and nobody comments on it. Kind of weird. At the midway is a broken machine that Ingrid wants you to fix. It needs a keyboard, which is in the haunted house. It was a good idea to give Nancy a reason to visit the haunted house here. That way players know about it ahead of the endgame challenge. Inside the haunted house, Nancy hears an odd noise. It makes sense that there'd be weird noises in the haunted house, but this one sounds like sawing. <laughs> I'll stop making that noise, sorry. Uh, the keyboard is in the corner by a shark dummy. You can go through the door here to see the actual ride. It's one of those slow-moving cart rides. There's another mechanical shark here. I don't know what the idea is behind the shark spooks. They're not scary, they're just kind of weird-looking. And there's also a back room with a radiator. Back to the carnival games. Uh, the back of the broken machine says it's serial number KM5200. And according to the notes here, you type in super, then the serial number, that fixes the machine, and you can play Barnacle Blast. This was a memorable mini game. You move your paddle left and right. Uh, there's a tutorial which explains everything. All you do is bounce a ball and destroy the barnacles. It's fun, except when you've only got one or two barnacles left and you can't get the ball to bounce properly. So you have to bounce it all the way across the screen and then bounce it all the way back, hoping you'll get it on the next try. That was kind of a pain. And also when you die, all of the barnacles reappear. Ugh. Why doesn't the game keep track of the barnacles you've already destroyed? Barnacle Blast is the only game that gives you two tokens. I wonder if they were originally going to have a fourth midway game with its own token, but they weren't able to finish it in time, so they were forced to make Barnacle Blast as a double token machine. Or maybe Barnacle Blast is a double token machine because it's the best. 
Next to Barnacle Blast is a slider puzzle called Swimmer's Itch. You want to move the swimmer to the left of the screen before time runs out. It's just like the slider puzzle from the final scene, except it's got a time limit. This was a fun game. I especially like the seagull artwork. It looks neat. Uh, the game looks neat. One level is all sharks, while another level is a diagonal line of tiles. That was a creative touch. I think these midway games are different on junior and senior mode. You have slightly different levels. I think that's the, the major junior and senior mode difference, besides for the fact that uh, junior mode has more hints, and like I said, there's that little clue of the tissue strips blowing in the fan on junior mode. The third midway game is Squid Toss, which is the exact same thing as the Ball Toss game from Secret of the Scarlet Hand. You could complain, hey, two of the midway games are just reused mini games from, uh, you know, other Nancy Drew games. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they're different enough that it doesn't really bother me that they're reusing general game ideas. They're fun. That's what I care about. Uh, if it's still fun, I'm going to play it, even if it's a reused idea. Plus, they are different. Uh, Squid Toss is harder than the Ball Toss game because there are more options to choose from. That is, you've got five angles to choose from and five power levels to use. So there's 25 possibilities instead of 18. Uh, if you mess up, you have to start the challenge from the beginning again. Each game costs one fun credit. If you use all five, you have to go back to Harlan for another fun card. Why can't he give you a card with a hundred fun credits on it? If you're lucky, you'll win all three games on the first try and you won't need another card. If you're not lucky, you'll just keep going back to Harlan over and over and over again for more credits. You get tokens for winning the Midway games. Take them to the prize booth for harmonica and uh, a Chinese yo-yo. You can also win a rubber shark or a sailboat if you want. I like the Midway. It was fun to take a break and play mini games. You only have to go here to get the harmonica, so they could have eliminated the midway entirely by, say, hiding the harmonica in the haunted house, but I'm glad they kept it. It was definitely a good segment. The roller coaster is blocked by the card reader puzzle. You put Ingrid's macro resistor on the right, then you use Elliot's soldering gun to connect it to the wires. Then you connect the top resistor. Uh, the bottom resistor is 30 ohms, and that's too much, so you don't want to connect it. I know that it's really simple math to say 30 is greater than 15, but I still feel like the instructions for this puzzle could have been explained better. There are supplementary instructions in the notebook that Ingrid gives you, but that felt like too much for me. Uh, multiple sets of instructions for a simple puzzle? Ugh, I don't know about you but I tend to avoid looking at Ingrid's notebook. If I need help, I, I'd rather ask Nancy's friends first. Once you get the circuit board, uh, you take the red tag to Harlan. He'll turn the card reader back on. It's funny how the security guard handles the electricity, not the engineer. The shark roller coaster is a cool area. I wish we got to ride the roller coaster. The murals are neat, too. There's a killer fish with its mouth wide open, and there's a shark fighting a giant squid. I really like it. Near the emergency stop button, Nancy finds a chewed-up pencil. And that's all she can look at in this area. That's kind of a shame. I, I wish there was more to look at in this area, but there's not. Just, just a pencil. On the way out, someone activates the tracks remotely. Nancy's foot is trapped underneath the track. Uh, just like last game, I think it's really cool we get to see her foot. I don't care that it's a death situation. It's like, wow, we get to see what Nancy looks like. So that was kind of distracting. Nancy's foot must be in major pain if it's crushed by metal so badly she can't move. I have to imagine that she is limping for the rest of the game. Luckily, the track reset box is within reach. Nancy needs to put three wires in the right spots. Uh, this is a time challenge, and the solution is random guessing. I'm not a huge fan of random guessing puzzles, but there are only six options, so it's not that bad. When you find the right solution, you hit the button to switch the tracks, and Nancy leaves the roller coaster never to return. I kind of wish we got to go back to the roller coaster, although I have no idea what we would do. Do there. Is there anything else for us to do? No, not really, but it's still cool! After the roller coaster death sequence, Nancy can confront Joy about the fact that her pencil was at the crime scene. It's really stupid of Joy to leave her pencil there, by the way. Why did she even bring it in the first place? She didn't need a pencil to push a button. 
Miles interrupts the conversation, the tattletale on Nancy. He says, Nancy snooped while Joy was gone. Quiet, Miles! Joy explains Miles was invented by her father to help Joy remember her childhood and her dead mother. With Nancy's prompting, Joy agrees to hear the first riddle. Miles asks for the silvery remains of a four-bit day. Nancy can ask everyone what the riddle means. Elliot realizes it refers to the Fun Day Sunday from the Captain's Quarters Hotel. They give out free spoons when you order this incredibly unhealthy dessert. Yeah, it's unhealthy. I still want to eat it. It looks delicious. You go back to Nancy's hotel room. You call room service. And the operator's kind of funny. She's a temporary replacement. Uh, I'm filling in for my cousin Amba, and I'm kind of annoyed at having to help people. Uh, this was a cute joke. It's one of those nice touches I was talking about earlier. They could have had a generic person on the phone, just like Franklin Rose's, uh, you know, phone assistant in Secret of the Scarlet Hand, but no, they went with a, a kind of funny phone operator, and I, I just like it, that's all. Uh, Nancy takes the spoon to Miles. He says Joy's mother took her for a Sunday almost every week. Joy would have been three years old at the time, so I hope her mother was good at handling hyperactive toddlers. I would not let my kid have a 2,000 calorie Sunday every single week. That is a recipe for disaster. Miles reveals that when Joy's mother died, she destroyed all the photos of her mother that she could. But even bad memories have a place in a happy life. That's pretty deep, Miles. That's pretty deep. The next riddle is a blank piece of paper, and again, Joy complains she doesn't know what it means. It's invisible ink, so you go to Nancy's room and use the iron to reveal a message. I always found navigation in the ironing closet to be strange, because it's got a forced perspective. You can't turn around in a circle like all the other rooms in the game. It's not a big deal, but it, it just felt kind of odd to me. The message says you need to play the first eight notes of Joy's favorite band organ tune on a harmonica. Miles says her favorite tune is on the third roll, and again, Joy gives up. Come on, Joy, stop being a quitter. You can go to the carousel much sooner than this. Uh, Nancy can look at the spot where the stolen horse was. I guess that's interesting. You can't do anything besides look at it, and there's nothing to see. It's just an empty spot and a hole in the ground. You can use a fun credit to ride the carousel. This is a tough challenge. I don't think it's supposed to be a tough challenge. I think it's supposed to be a simple challenge, and I'm just terrible at it. The challenge is to grab the brass ring, and you want to click while Nancy's at the ring, but if you click at the wrong time, like I always do, she falls off the horse, and she's fired. You get two chances, but even still, it's possible to get stuck on this puzzle and be forced to do it over and over again. Uh, you can use Nancy's access card to go inside the carousel. Uh, there's a trap door that leads underneath. On the ground is a ZapTech device. It's an electrical device. It starts the carousel remotely. So that's how the haunting is faked. Nancy solving the haunting mystery should be a big deal, but the game doesn't make much of it. Because, hey, we've got robot riddles to solve. Who cares about uh, electrical carousels? When Nancy goes up through the trapdoor, she sees a letter hidden in the rafters. You use the Chinese yo-yo uh, to knock it down. The letter's from Rolf Kessler. It's to his wife. It says there's a hidden door to his workshop behind the radiator. That's the radiator in the haunted house. You can go there and use the ZapTech device on the wall to make the keyhole appear. That is a tough puzzle. It's not at all obvious that you should use the electrical carousel remote on the area above the radiator. I, I, I don't... That seems like a leap in logic to me. I don't see the connection there. The culprit will give the key to Nancy by leaving an anonymous note for her at Harlan's. The note is labeled from a friend, and it leads to a death trap. Isn't that the exact same thing that happened in Secrets Can Kill? Nancy should stop trusting her anonymous friend notes. The key unlocks a staircase. When Nancy goes there, she almost gets killed by a falling puffer fish. It's a really cool looking fish, too. I like it. It falls slowly, so you have enough time to back away to avoid it. It's just like the Klieg Light death from the final scene. Uh, you don't find Kessler's hidden workshop here, but you do find Ingrid's missing pliers. Did she try to kill you in a rather strange fashion? I like the pufferfish and roller coaster death scenes. They add some tension and suspense to the game. It totally matches the books, which have fake-out cliffhangers at the end of every chapter. 
If you think about it, uh, the death scenes don't make too much sense. The culprit doesn't have a good enough reason to commit attempted murder at this point, but they were still good challenges. Also in the center of the carousel is the band organ. Open it up to see a warning note from Tink, the carousel operator. He's on vacation, fishing. Tink was another fun phone contact. He's a fun character. The phone calls in this game were really great. Tink gives you the combination to the case with the rules, but when you try to play roll three, the take-up dial breaks. You have to make a new one at Elliot's. Elliot agrees to let you use his lathe, and then he goes away. Hey, you want to use a dangerous piece of equipment that you've never used before? Great! I'm leaving you unsupervised. The lathe puzzle is a little tricky because Nancy puts the old dowel at an angle instead of lining it perfectly against the measuring stick. I always feel like I'm guessing what the measurements are, especially since the lathe extends for a half inch on both sides when you use it at maximum length. Once you get a dowel that matches perfectly, Nancy will say so. Uh, and while Elliot's gone, you should look at his magazine. There's an article about Rolf Kessler written by Anton Sukov. Elliot got his phone number somehow, and Nancy copies it down. If you don't do this now, you can do it later. Elliot will be gone from his area without any explanation. Harlan also leaves his area without explanation, although I think you can get rid of him sooner by telling him about the roller coaster mishap. He promises to leave and check it out. On Harlan's desk is a magazine with highlighted numbers. You use them to open up his locker. He's got an appointment book that says he met with Louis G. When you call Louis G., you learn he's Harlan's parole officer. Uh-oh, now Harlan looks even more like the Jewel Thief's prison cellmate. Uh, Louis G. isn't there at the moment, but he'll call you back after Nancy has cleared Harlan when you don't need to talk to him anymore. Bad timing, Luis. At the bottom of Harlan's locker is a tape. Put it in the tape player to see its security footage of Ingrid entering her security code. Now I'm wondering why Ingrid's area is the only one that's locked with a keypad. Everywhere else has a card reader or nothing. Either way, Harlan's been spying on Ingrid so he can snoop in her room when she's not there. That is very naughty of him, and it's exactly what Nancy wants to do. Snooping time! She breaks into Ingrid's area to find circumstantial evidence. Uh, Ingrid has an incredibly expensive watch by her computer, and she's got the phone number of LH. You call it, it's Lance Huffington, the guy who's suing the park over the roller coaster accident. Lance gets a little flirty with Nancy. He says Ingrid's solution worked perfectly. When you confront Ingrid later, she explains, hey, she gave the roller coaster blueprints to a friend in exchange for a lot of money. Even if that's not illegal, it's still super shady, like he gave her tens of thousands of dollars in cash. Uh, Ingrid has Lance's phone number because she gave him a treatment for neck pain, not because she's in cahoots with him. When Ingrid starts to get mad at Nancy for falsely accusing her, Nancy cleverly deflects the conversation away from her and onto Harlan's spy tape, so that's actually kind of a, a clever move on Nancy's part. Paula calls around this time, Nancy tells her about the spy tape, an angry Harlan will then summon Nancy. He's mad that Nancy tattletailed on him to his boss. Sorry, Harlan, but it's Nancy's job to report suspicious behavior. You know that. In fact, I'm kind of surprised Nancy doesn't report Ingrid's blueprint theft to Paula. That, that, is, that is suspicious behavior that Paula should know about. Harlan admits maybe he shouldn't spy on his co-workers, but he loves the job so much, he felt like he had to do it. He's, he's just being extra excited about his job. Thumbs up for Harlan taking initiative, uh, thumbs down for the initiative being invasion of privacy. Harlan will refuse to talk after this. Sorry, I don't feel like talking right now. My back hurts, probably because somebody just got done stabbing me there. I love that line. Nancy returns to the carousel with the correct dowel. She plays the song, and as I mentioned earlier, you have to have tissue strips and tape on the organ in order to see what the various notes are. When you play the song for Miles, Joy remembers she loved the carousel as a kid. Her parents bought her a carousel horse, and the name of the horse is the next riddle. Thanks to the stenography challenge, you know the horse's name is Glory. The final riddle leads to the horse. You put Kessler's nickname for Amelia on Spook 10 and put the brass ring on its forearm. 
Nancy offers to do this riddle with Joy, which would be great. It'd be neat to have Joy and Nancy go all over the park together. She could comment on different things that Nancy sees, or if that's too much work to program, just have Joy say, sure, I'll meet you at the haunted house, and then she goes to that location. That would be cool, too. But no, Joy confesses she caused the roller coaster accident. She wanted to sabotage Paula as revenge for her father's death. Joy leaves to apologize to Paula in person, so Nancy's all alone for the endgame segment. Uh, Miles' riddle says Tink has a book about Kessler. If you call Tink, he says he doesn't have it anymore. So you have to get the nickname answer from Anton Sukov, who says the nickname is Spotsy. The spook's arm has been red-tagged, so you have to get the arm from Ingrid and give the tag to Harlan. That forces you to complete the Ingrid and Harlan subplots, if you haven't already. You put the arm on, then use the plier several times until it's tight. When the spook is turned on, it's glowing. Now it legitimately looks like something in a haunted house, instead of just a weird shark thing. You open up its chest and spin the letters to spell out Spotsy. The fingers on the hand clump together... Nancy slides the ring on its arm. A sign pops down from the ceiling, which says, Oh, Joy! This is it! The sign points to a hidden staircase. Nancy doesn't notice the stairs are in bad shape, so she falls down and breaks them all. Ow! Poor Nancy! First the smashed foot, then falling down broken stairs, she's gonna need hospital time after this case. But Nancy is so amazing... Even when she's clumsy, it's helpful to the mystery. She knocks over the carousel horse, which reveals it has these stolen jewels inside. Nancy takes all of the jewels that are on the ground, but she leaves a necklace hanging from the inside of the leg. And that always bothered me. It's a valuable necklace. Don't just leave it. Take it with you. Joy's dad left her a letter with a picture of her mother. It's sweet. And dad left a PS that's helpful to the mystery. It says Kessler's hidden workshop connects to this room. Nancy goes inside to find the culprit's lair. The culprit has the stolen carousel horse and lots of forgeries, all in various stages of completion. There are emails indicating the culprit plans to sell them soon. Soon-ish. Okay, the culprit can only finish one to two horses per month, so the timing on the theft was really bad timing on the culprit's part. The culprit should have waited to steal the horse until after the forgeries were finished. Anyway, when Nancy tries to steal the room, the culprit appears... It's Elliot! So the culprit is the only character whose subplot wasn't resolved earlier. This is a problem with some Nancy Drew games. You can figure out who the culprit is when all the other characters have already been cleared. Elliot makes sense as the culprit, though. No one else has the technical expertise to make forgeries. If one of the others was the culprit, they wouldn't be making forgeries. They would be selling the stolen horse outright. There's a cool animation of Elliot walking into the room. He openly admits his guilt and says Nancy won't be telling anyone, ever. Nancy distracts him with the stolen jewels. If you refuse to give the jewels to him, there's a scene of him coming in to strangle you, creepy. And then you're forced to rewatch the entire conversation again. Uh, second chance! Don't, don't, don't start from the beginning again! Restart closer to the death scene. You're supposed to pick the dialogue option of, You want them? Here! Nancy throws the jewelry at Elliot's face. He's hurt, and Nancy runs up the stairs to the haunted house. Somehow, Elliot is able to trap Nancy in the room by shutting the exit door, even though he's nowhere near the door. I have no idea how he did that. If Nancy runs to the exit door anyway, she's electrocuted. Again, I have no idea how Elliot did that. He's nowhere near her, and he doesn't have electrical powers. Oh, and before I forget... Someone pointed out that there's an alternate culprit capture for this game. Here's the scene as it is in the game. I'm trapped! I've got to get out of here! I've got you, Nancy. You're cornered. You might as well give up. And here's the alternate scene. I've got to get out of here! I've got you, Nancy. You're cornered. The fat lady's singing. They kept the original audio file with the game, but it never gets used. Anyway, Elliot stands behind the sign for a long period of time, considering that he's chasing Nancy. Generally, you do not stand in place when you're chasing someone. Nancy removes the brass ring from the spook. The sign goes back up, knocking Elliot down into the trap door. 
There's a humorous scene of Elliot falling. The stairs are broken, though, so I have to imagine he was seriously injured. In the ending, Elliot admits he did everything for publicity so his horse forgeries would be sold at higher prices. Harlan shares the credit for busting Elliot, even though he didn't really do anything. At most, all he did was turn on the electricity to the spook. That's not the same as foiling the culprit. But Harlan gets all the credit. Nancy gets none of the credit. Poor Nancy. Harlan gets three job offers, but he decides to stay here at the park out of loyalty to Paula. Ingrid writes a note about Mercury in retrograde. So she is obsessed with planets now? I thought she was obsessed with food. And Joy is now a happy person. It's a really happy ending. Nancy gets awards at the end of the game for the first time. The various awards are for getting the Easter egg, reading everything, exploring everywhere, using the harmonica a lot, eating a lot of room service food, riding the carousel, playing the midway games, talking to everyone, using a lot of second chances, using a lot of hints, talking on the phone a lot, solving the puzzles quickly, and playing the game for more than 24 hours. How many people got the 24-hour award, huh? Uh, there's also an award for unlocking all of the different awards, and a generic buy-the-book award if you don't qualify for any of the others. The awards are kind of cool, and they'll have awards in every game after this one, although starting with game 17, you can get multiple awards and not just one. Because you can qualify for multiple awards. You can get an Easter egg and play the harmonica a lot, right? The preview for the next game is Nancy calling George. Nancy's going on a quiet whale-watching vacation. Crap! As if... I love that preview. So that's it for the Haunted Carousel. I like the game. It's fun. It's funny. It has a good variety of things to do, and I love the atmosphere. I'm probably biased because it's the first game I played in the Nancy Drew series, but I feel that it's a great game without any big flaws. The biggest flaw would be Ingrid's not too interesting, but that's not that big a deal. It's one of my favorites, definitely one of the games I'd recommend to series newcomers. I give Nancy Drew The Haunted Carousel a 10 out of 10.